It's heavy. Did I mention it's heavy? So cool. There's the weld I just cut off. One of them. That's the top one. Here's the bottom one. There's a little bit of the oil left on there. What a pain in the ass that was. I thought we had a showstopper there. Now we can actually get back to the teardown. All right, so I just read online this thing weighs 130 pounds. That's almost as much as the, uh, the big Wilton here. Anyhow, um, off camera a little bit ago, while I was waiting on things to cool down, uh, I tried to break these two guys free and it didn't work out so well. As a matter of fact, I chipped my impact driver big blade. Uh, I think that's a half inch. Chipped it right in half, not in half, but. So I did hit that with the oxy torch, and I don't know if that's gonna help free it up or not, but these two are freed up. There's one more big one on the back side. Looks like all of these handles are just held in with clips, so we'll, we'll try to get those out right now. That's what the clip looks like. Itty bitty, I'll, I'll show all the parts later. These aren't even like spring clips, they're just like chunks of wire. Okay, one more. Oh yeah. Well that thing is no joke. Check that out. He's as big as my hands here. Look at that. There's a pretty thick layer of crud on the inside. Get all that cleaned up. The seal, obviously I had to cook it, didn't I? Honestly, this guy should break loose now. There ain't nothing else holding it down. There it goes. It's going to bleed all up. Look at all that water. That is straight water coming out of there. Wow, the crud in here is amazing. There she is. Oof. That is gross. Look at that crud in there. Holy crap, no wonder it didn't work. Makes you wonder how any fluid at all got through there. Here's the old seal. And I'll bet you this is just all rust sludge. I can feel all the rust crumbs in there. I think it's fixable. Might not look like it, but I think it is. Tell you what, this is uh, honestly a lot worse than I was expecting. It's kind of cool to see the insides of these things though. There she goes. Oh, that is nasty. 
Got it. Man, this boar is so gross. I just hope it doesn't go flying all over. Like that. Really, really awful sludge. I mean, all of that came out. I mean, here's my hand. You can see how big the pile is. All of that come out of there. Inside of this thing looks virtually zero better. I mean, just load of goop. Hey everybody, so this is day, I don't know, five or something, working on this uh, 100 ton press, uh, or jack. Uh, before I get started with what I'm about to do today, I just want to throw a quick uh, shout out to uh, Bill O'Grady with uh, Wilmar International Lube. I've been talking to him on the phone. He was uh, gracious enough to uh, spend a little bit of time with me, chatting to me about the different parts and pieces and helping me determine if you know what brand this thing is and all that stuff so if you need anything hydraulic jack wise you know look it up uh wilmar international w-i-l-l-m-a-r international um, and also to uh, a guy i think it's a guy supreme Steelers uh, on my youtube uh, for pointing out that my audio was only coming through uh, one channel uh, i got this wireless setup now uh, you know, going high tech and all. And uh, I didn't realize it was uh, doing one channel per uh, transmitter. So I think I got that resolved, hopefully. Uh, anyway, thanks a bunch. I appreciate it to both of you. Uh, for today, geez, I'm just going to keep tearing this thing apart. Uh, I'm going to hone out the inside of the cylinder here. I'm going to sandblast the, 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 the shell over there and some of these other parts to get them cleaned up. I want to actually do a full repaint on this. I need to clean the, the cap, uh, get my weld cleaned up off of there, and basically just prep work for the reassembly. I'm gonna actually tear off all the seals as well. So a lot of the seals here are still on the components. So like this is the top ring um, and it's got a seal on it. The, uh, the other seals, I wanna get a whole pile of the seals so that I can uh, take a photo and send it to the guy, who uh, Will Marsh there, that company. And, that way he can compare it to his kit to see if it looks like the proper kit for what I'm doing here. I don't want to order a $150 plus dollar kit and have it be the wrong one. Now, from what he and I have discussed, there's apparently not many makers of 100 ton bottle jacks. Um, he, Walker, Heinz Warner, and what was the other one? Um, Enterpack. And it seems like they all look identical, like they're interchangeable. They probably all use the same parts. At least that's what I'm concluding right now. Um, this one appears to be the same color and the same parts breakdown as a Heinz Warner and uh, the Heinz Warner parts breakdown list. Everything looks the same, but it also looks identical to two inner packs that I found on eBay. I mean, exactly the same down to the exact same pattern on the top of the the ram the the size uh, so i don't know but he's helping me work all that out so i really appreciate it uh, in the meantime i'm just going to show bits and pieces of the next couple of hours uh, and probably the last couple of days too so thanks for watching stick around uh, we'll have this finished up unit here soon enough all right so i'm going to go over something else real quick here that uh, turned out to be a huge pain in the butt uh, getting this thing torn apart so we've got all these plugs here, okay? There's two on this side, um, a little one on this side, a little one, two big ones, and then a couple more on the other side. But just, just so you can see what we're looking at here, the little one, uh, the medium size one is about a half inch in diameter, and I did happen to have a half inch impact driver bit, okay? So this guy came in extremely handy trying to break these and of course they're all flatheads right they couldn't be something with a little more grip in there but the, the the half inch ones all came out pretty easy now these big ones you know i tried once with that half inch and you can see the size difference here it's it's way off right you see how much play there is in there and i realized immediately that that wasn't going to work and i didn't have a bigger one so i took a, a cold chisel and I ground on the edges. I gave it a little bit of a hollow ground grind here and uh, just got it to where it was the exact size for these um, big plugs. And it worked out pretty good. It was still a lot of work, a lot of banging, a lot of smashing. And then even furthermore, I ended up taking a torch to it. First, I tried uh, my smaller map gas torch. 
threw some heat right on the plug, right on the plug, and then I let it sit. And that's after everything's already taken apart on the top half. You know, you don't want to build up too much heat if the, if the uh, pressure behind it can't go somewhere, right? So I heat it up and then let it cool, threw some, P some PB Blaster on there, heat it up, let it cool, and then I hit it with this big impact uh, flat head and I got all of the big ones loose and all of the medium ones loose, like these guys here on the side. I got one of the small ones loose and that is where I'm stuck right now. I've got two small ones left. That's one of them actually. Anyway, I've already basically put an hourglass shape in that screw head there. I've got two of them to go and uh, I'm probably gonna hit them with some more heat and then I might even get in there and we're, I guess worst case scenario, I might have to drill that out and easy out or, or something. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but I'm... Now we're gonna get these threads cleaned out. Here's what the part looks like before. All right, everybody, so I've been cleaning the parts little by little. These just got out of the blast cabinet. This will go in there next. But in the meanwhile, I wanna show you the ram here. So we've got the ram. The ram is turned down to this inner diameter where this, I guess, foot goes, and then the seal goes, and then this cap goes on here. And the, the end of the ram, the, the turned down part, has been peened over to stop the cap from sliding up. So I'm gonna take this little cutoff wheel on a, uh, Dremel and I'm just going to carve back a little bit of that peening and uh, we'll see if we can't get this thing off of here All right, so I think that looks good. I know it's hard to see here, but I think I got all the peening in this the center dowel part turn down part away from the cap here so I'm going to adjust my vise so that it'll catch this foot, but, but not the, the actual, like that. And it ain't moving. Eesh. Just scratch this guy up a little bit here. Crap. I broke free now. There it goes. All right. Yummy. All sorts of lovely in here. There it is. That's our seal. All right, everybody. So I'm working on the pumps now, and this is the bigger of the two. The end was just peened over. There's two peen marks on this nut. I just broke it loose with an impact driver. Uh, impact gun, whatever. Nut popped right off, then it's a little twist and pry pry and the whole assembly comes off. There's a, a end cap, then the cup, the seal cup, and then a base gasket of some sort. Those pop right off, and then this collar pops right off, has a seal inside of it. I took it out a few minutes ago, so. And I'm gonna try to clean up this guy a little bit. I don't know if this comes in the rebuild kit, so we'll find out soon enough. Then we have the other one, the small pump, and it's a little bit different. It's got a peened over end and then the same setup, a little cap and then the cup, which you can see that cup is shot and then a base gasket and then the same thing with the, the uh, tightening collar. And a nice gentleman I spoke to a little bit ago said you just kind of file it off, which it's just about there. Here it comes. You see, I got it tilted there. There it goes. Got the itty bitty little cap there. Well, we're in the home stretch here. The reservoir's done, the retaining nut's done, the top nut is done, the uh, ram is done. All these other parts are done. Now all that's left is the actual base unit. I've plugged off all the holes. I reinstalled all of the port plugs all the way around. I'm gonna stuff a rag in the main cylinder here. Um, the only reason this is really going in the cabinet, 
um, is to get this guy cleaned up with the blaster. Um, so since it's going in there, I might as well get it all, right? Um, the inside of the cylinder here, we're gonna hone and uh, we'll, we'll do that separate. Uh, that'll definitely be on video, but everything's closed back up. Probably wouldn't hurt to get some of that sand in there, but the thing is, it just, it's just gonna make it harder when I flush it out because I'm gonna put this in the solvent tank and spray out all the ports, get everything inside cleaned up as best as possible. But uh, trying to get the, the last little bit of this base and everything to look like that stuff, it, it's almost impossible with a wire wheel. So here we go. All the pieces are cleaned, sandblasted anyway. Base turned out pretty nice. Still got some pitting down here, but that's inside. It doesn't really matter. Um, next, I'm gonna get all these plugs out and everything, and then we're gonna hone the inside. After that, everything, everything is gonna get a, a solvent bath and then a, a brake cleaner wash and air dry. And then we'll be ready for paint. All right, everybody, getting ready to hone this thing out. I've got my automotive style honing tool. Um, I've already sprayed some uh, 30 weight oil with a little bit of paraffin mix in here and uh, I've already spread it everywhere that way the stones aren't hitting uh, dry steel and uh, we're just going to hit it up and I'm not going to go too crazy. The bottom section down way at the bottom is actually really clean. It's this top third or so that's really rotten um, but I mean how often am I going to be using a hundred ton jack at the top end of its stroke. So hopefully that will never be an issue. The seal should make perfect contact near the bottom. Kind of just can't have too much oil when it comes to this. Definitely a lot of gunk coming out, which is good. This is really black right now, which tells me it's cleaning up the sidewalls. We'll keep going a few more times. I did, uh, I did take measurements before I started. I took uh, two measurements at the top, two in the middle, two at the bottom, crisscrossing, and uh, they all come in within a couple thou of uh, three, and a, three and three quarter. I don't think, don't quote me on this, but I don't think it's all that imperative that we have the best seal ever. That's mostly the cup seal at the bottom here. That's where all your lifting power comes from. So for this one, I'm just looking to smooth it up a little bit. Spend another 15 minutes trying to center this guy. And now I'm just gonna hit it with a, a blue pad, you know, nice and easy just to kind of polish it up a little. It's definitely looking better. I'm actually gonna switch over to a little more abrasive disc. Back to a blue disc. Heck yeah, beautiful. All right, here's all the parts cleaned up. Just finished honing the inside of the cylinder. Now it looks like another two to three weeks before I can get the uh, rebuild kit. 